Some people use Sublime Text to write text files and other prose. Others use it to write source code for a variety of programming languages in their software development. Some people use it for both of those things. Something all of these users have in common is the desire, occasional or otherwise, to have a terminal open directly within Sublime Text that allows them to run external commands within the context of their package without having to leave Sublime to do it and then come back. Now, Sublime doesn't have that functionality built in, but there is a package that provides it, and that's why this package parade video is all about Terminus. <laughs> Hello fellow Sublime Text fanatics, Odat Nerd here. Welcome to this video on Terminus, the package that allows you to have a terminal directly within Sublime Text itself. Before we get into that though, as always, as a reminder, if you're finding these videos in any way useful or helpful, please let me know by using those buttons down below to thumb, share, and subscribe as you deem appropriate. And if you have any questions or comments on the content of this video, any of my videos, or suggestions for other Sublime Text topics you'd like me to cover, or other packages you'd like me to showcase in the package parade, you can drop those down in the comment section below or hit me on Twitter at odatnerd. The package we're talking about today, though, is Terminus by Randy3k. It's relatively new. It's only been around for about a year, but it's quite popular, and it is becoming what I think is the preeminent terminal package for Sublime Text. And one of the things I like about it is that I use Sublime across all of the operating systems that it supports, Windows, Mac OS, and Linux, and Terminus works across those three systems as well. So regardless of which operating system you use, Terminus will work for you. Now, as always, the first thing we might want to do when we're interested in looking for new packages is use package control discover packages. That's going to open the package control web page in our browser for us. And we can search for packages and we might search for a terminal because we're interested in having a terminal in Sublime. Now, Terminus is currently the third hit here and it describes itself as the best terminal emulator for Sublime text. I tend to agree. So we're going to click on that. And as we can see, here. It is only about a year old, but it already has 24,000 installs, and it's, it is a pretty popular package. And as we always say in these videos, you really should read this README. It has a lot of information in here on configuring uh, Terminus and setting up the, it up the way that you want. It can do a lot of things. It can open terminals in panels at the bottom. It can open them in tabs. It can, you can actually use it to execute interactive programs in Sublime. We'll cover all of that in a later bit of the video here. So you're going to want to read through all of this information here. But we're just going to go ahead and jump directly into Sublime and say install package in the command palette to install a package and say we want the terminus package. As part of the Terminus install, Package Control installs some dependency libraries. So when that is the case, it is usually a good idea to quit and restart Sublime to make sure that everything uh, is working the way that you would expect it to work. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that now. Now that Sublime has been restarted, we're going to jump into the command palette and look at the commands that Terminus adds. There's a few of them. What we can do is we can open the default shell in a panel or open the default shell in a view. Now the difference there is a panel is one of those items that's at the bottom of the window. It's immovable from that position. Think for example, the output of a build system when you run it goes into a panel, whereas a view is just like a regular file tab. So if you want your terminal to be in the bottom of the window, you'd wanna open it in a panel. Otherwise you can open it a view, for example, if you wanted it side by side with your code. We can also list all of the shells that it is capable of executing. We can close all of the terminal views, a specific view, and we can also reset a terminal, which is like typing reset or clear or CLS uh, in your terminal, which just resets the output back to an empty window. I'm going to choose list shells here. And we can see under Windows, there are three of these configured for me. There's the standard command prop, which is command.exe. There's PowerShell, which is PowerShell.exe. And there's the WSL login, the Windows subsystem for Linux. I'm going to go ahead and choose just command prompt here. And it's going to ask me, do I want to open this in a view or do I want to open it in a panel? 
And for the purposes of this, I'm going to say I want to open it in a panel. So we can see it pops in down there at the bottom of the window. And this is a Windows command prompt. So I can just type some commands in here and we can see the contents of my user directory for the user that I create screencasts for. One thing I like to do as soon as uh, I do this is go into the terminal terminus options and pick select theme. And there are a variety of different color schemes that you can apply to your terminus view. These are sort of kind of like sublime color schemes, uh, but not really. You can create your own custom ones, of course, view the documentation on that. And again, as you scroll through these, just like when you're setting a color scheme in sublime, it's going to show you what it's going to look like. And you can scroll through these and find the one that you like. I personally like the solarized dark higher contrast contrast item. Now what that actually did was modify the preferences for the package for me to set that color scheme, which tells us that we could go into the preferences package settings and now there's an entry for terminus and we can view settings, key bindings, and items that it's added to the command palette. I'm going to go ahead and choose settings here and of course that opens in its own window and I'm going to maximize that and we can see that it has added the setting solarized dark higher contrast as the theme that is used for this. Now over here on the side, this is this setting shell configs is a list of all available shells to execute. The one that's marked as default is the default shell. That's that command that we saw uh, in the command palette a moment ago. And I'm going to go ahead and take all of these and I'm going to copy that and jump over to this side and we're going to just stick that in here at a comma and paste. Now we are using package dev, which means we could use that pencil icon to copy this over. But in this case, package dev will put this setting in there as one big, long, continuous string, makes it a little tricky to uh, edit it. Now, the first thing I'm going to note is I don't have the Windows subsystem for Linux installed on my system. So I'm going to come down here and set enable on this one to false just to hide it. But I'll leave it there in case I decide to install that later. Now, I also have PowerShell installed, but I'm actually using PowerShell version 6 and not the one that ships with Windows, and that is PWSH. I'm going to change that here. And I'm also going to say that I want this to be the default because as a Linux person, PowerShell is slightly less uh, nerve-wracking to me. It supports commands that I'm more familiar with, like ls instead of dir. Saves me 50% of the time. I don't have to remember that I'm on the wrong operating system. And command prompt, we're going to leave in here. And I'm going to swap this to false. And I don't like to use Z shell. Uh, and so I'm going to go ahead and set that to be false. Uh, is we can also see these items have the platforms that they're enabled on. This allows you to synchronize these settings across all of your systems. And I do use Sublime Text across Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. So I'm configuring this all for that there. I do like to use Bash, and I do want that to be the default. So those will both be enabled. And I'm going to save those settings. Now, there are other settings that you can look at in here. and uh, You can examine those um, as you see fit. Remember to always the documentation for a package to get information on how you can configure it. And we're going to jump back over to here. Now I'm going to go ahead and close this by typing exit in here, and that's going to close it. And now I can say I want to open default shell, but I'm going to pick in a view instead. That's going to make it as a tab in the window instead of as that console at the bottom in the, in a, the panel. And now we can see we up here have a PowerShell tab, and it's doing uh, the same thing. So now I can type ls and get the, the listing that I'm familiar with. So that is quite nice as well. So if you like to have, say, a terminal terminal open to the side of the file that you're working on, you would open it in a tab or a view. And if you'd like it at the bottom, you can open it in a window. I'm going to go ahead and close that again. Something to keep in mind about Terminus is that as a terminal emulator, when it has the focus, it wants to take all of the keys that you press and send them to the program that you're running. 
So there's a couple of key bindings you might want to add to your custom key bindings, and we're going to go ahead and cover those now. I got these from the README in the package, so you want to go ahead and read that. But I'm going to go ahead in here and say Preferences Key Bindings. These are just my standard user key bindings. And again, I'm going to maximize that window. And the first one we're going to add is this one, which uses... Alt back tick to toggle terminus panel. That's one of the commands that terminus adds. And the arguments to that are going to be that the current working directory should be either the path of the file that I'm currently looking at and editing or the folder that's open in the sidebar. With the key binding enabled, I can go ahead and press Alt back tick and we can see it opens the default shell for me, which is PowerShell in a panel. And it's opened it into the folder that the current file is in, which is my user package, and I can hit the key again to toggle it away. Another key binding that we might find useful in the case of Terminus is this one, which again comes from the README, and it binds the Control w key, which is what on Windows and Linux would be normally used to close a tab, to tell the Terminus window that it should close. So that means that I can hit the Alt back to key to open the terminal. And again, it's opened in my user package. And if I hit Control W, it closes the view. Now, there's one other thing you might want to use Terminus for, and that is executing an interactive program directly. Now, we did cover this in one of the common questions videos on build systems, so we're going to just cover it here again. One of the commands that Terminus provides is called Terminus Open. You can pass it a command to execute and some other options, and that allows you to use it as a build system. And again, this is documented in the README for the package. But if we were going to go into Tools, Build, Build system and choose new build system from the bottom. And again, like in the video, just to save us time, I'm going to go ahead and paste this in and I'm going to save it as TCC interactive like so. Now, TCC is the tiny C compiler. It's something that allows you to compile and run simple C programs all in one operation. And I have set that up here and we can see I'm, we're using a custom build target of Terminus Open and we're telling it what command to execute, TCC, that it should execute in the working directory, which is the path of the current file. And the important thing here is auto close false, which tells Terminus that when the program exits, don't immediately close the tab. Because if if you're doing this as a build system, you might want to be able to uh, see what the output of the program was before it goes away. And now that that's in place, if I come over here and press the build key, there's a few different build systems. I'm going to pick TCC Interactive, and it's going to see that it has opened this PowerShell window and it's running my program. And I can say, what is your name? My name is Terrence, and the interactive program runs. This is one of the other great things about Terminus, its ability to be used as this. And because we added that key binding, I can hit Control W to close that and go back to my program. So there we have a brief overview of Terminus and what it can do for you. You're going to want to read the README for this package as for all packages. There's a lot of useful information in there, including the ability to run other commands before or after a tab is opened. And one example of that, which you can find in the README, is a key binding that you can create that would open a new terminal and then move it into a new pane using the origami package that we covered in a previous video. I hope you found this useful or helpful. If you have, please use the buttons down below to thumb subscribe and share as you deem appropriate. And if you have any questions on the content of this video or any videos or suggestions for other topics you'd like me to cover, please do drop those down in the comment section below or hit me on Twitter at odatnerd. I'm always looking for new ideas for videos. Until that next video, this is odatnerd asking you to please have a sublime day.